it's me. Hi. <laughs> What's up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I definitely struggled with what to talk about in today's video. I'm trying to just stay consistent and get on here every week, even if I'm not feeling the best sometimes or I have no clue what to talk about. And I feel like I've been online and on social media for so long. Honestly, like what else can I say about myself? You guys have heard it all. But at the same time, I know I have a lot of new homies and friends on here. Let's just go back to basics. And if you already heard the story, maybe there will be some tidbits that you didn't hear before. Maybe you can relate to it and yeah. So yeah, today I wanted to talk about my coming out story. I am bisexual, fluid, people. If the human is someone that I am attracted to and I connect with, I'm all about it. And you know, I also respect people that are labelless and stuff like that, but I definitely do like expressing my sexuality and bringing visibility to it. And if you guys are coming from Love Island, just going into certain spaces that I feel like there's not that much visibility. So I'm proud. <laughs> and you should be too, if you are someone like me and you came out or you haven't come out and you're just finding yourself. Let's talk about my coming out story. I grew up, as a lot of you know, in a very open household. My dad is bisexual, but it was never something that was really spoken to us a lot, like your dad's bi or dad's bi. It was more like, daddy's attracted to men and women, so if you are attracted to men and women too, like, that's okay, love is love. When my sister and I were growing up, it was never like, when you meet your husband and this and that, I feel like my parents did a really, really good job of always just being like, whoever you meet, whether it's a guy or a girl, or as my pop-up would say, polka dot or whatever, you know, whoever you love, it's completely fine. And mommy and daddy will always support you. At a very young age, we weren't like talking about sexuality, but it was just more of a conversation of whoever you choose, mommy and daddy will always love you and support you and it's okay. The crazy thing when it comes to my coming out story, and I pretty much knew at a very, very young age that I liked women. I kind of was like the reverse of a lot of people where I always knew that I liked women. I remember, I think it was fifth grade, I had an English teacher named Allison. Allison, if you're out there, what's up? No, <laughs> I just remember going to Allison's classes and just being like, I feel something like these butterflies are going on. Being with my friends a lot of the times, I would just be so nervous around other women, but I just didn't feel comfortable. And I was like, why are they all so chill with each other? I didn't feel like any of them were like the same type of nervous that I was, but I just knew inside, like it doesn't feel like a friend feeling sometimes with certain girls <laughs> you know like i think when you're that young too like we're human we feel things and i was feeling things a couple years pass and knowing that i had such an open family and coming to terms with being more open about who i was it was still terrifying so i can't even imagine for people that don't have a supportive family because even with me having two parents that i knew weren't going to kick me out weren't going to tell me that it was gross or i couldn't be this way or that they loved me less because of this or I had to change myself you know I knew that I had parents that no matter what I told them especially in this category and knowing that my dad was bisexual that it was going to be open arms but even with knowing all of that I remember I was coming home from school one day I think I walked in and my dad was the only one that was home and I just remember sitting on the table my dad was watching tv and I just remember sitting on the table and just like sitting there and staring at him I was watching him watch tv if that makes any sense but I was just like sitting there for like five to ten minutes I think kind of waiting for him to see me looking at him to be like what I just remember breaking down it was really weird it was like a feeling inside that it felt like I was almost it almost felt like imposter syndrome at that time because you know like I said growing up I didn't see a lot of bisexual women that looked like me or queer women that looked like me I just felt very much I don't look like them so how can I actually be into women or you know at that young of an age how is anyone gonna take me seriously if I say that should I even say it or should I just keep on going with the norm and that sounds easier I don't know I feel like it was just bubbling up over time that when you feel something so strong inside of yourself I'm just the type of person like emotion wise, I just need to say it. I need to, I need to say it. And once I say it, it feels so much better. But for some reason, even knowing that my dad was going to be so accepting, especially out of everyone in my family, I just, I was terrified. And I remember my voice was like trembling. I broke down as I was obviously telling him. I said I was bisexual, but even more at the time, I thought I was a lesbian because I hadn't, I hadn't really had those feelings for men yet in my life. And I just remember my dad, he would kind of just reacted in the way of like, yeah, I know, I know that already. He was like, baby, why are you crying? Like, why, why are you crying? Like, you know that this is okay to me and, and it's, it's okay in general. It was like this feeling of shame and almost a little bit of like 
this sounds so terrible and I feel so sad for little Kira and that she even felt like that but it felt like gross and I don't know where that feeling came from and why I had it because my parents were so accepting and I was not taught that it was ever not okay but I still somehow had this feeling that I felt gross because I had these feelings even though my parents and family were going to accept me maybe everyone else wasn't and that things might change and I think in general it's scary when you come out and I'm not even also saying like a lot of people don't come out and that's completely okay too like you don't have to come out. You don't have to label yourself. Like I always say all of this, but for me as an individual, like it was very important for me to express my truth to my family and, and share with them. I will probably marry a woman one day. But the crazy thing is my dad even shared with me that he already knew because when I was even younger, we were watching some show. We were watching the show and I looked at him and I asked, what happens if I like her? And he was like, what do you mean? And I was like, girls. My sister was always, boyfriend, husband, like all these different things. And at a very young age, my sister was like, I'm gonna get married, I'm gonna have babies, I'm gonna have all these different things. And I just never felt like that. And of course, having a big sister too, you wanna be like them and all these different things. And I just remember even being in school, guys asking me out and I was just like, ew. I realized later on in life, I don't like boys, I like men. <laughs> I am bisexual because I found out more later on in life that I had feelings for men too. Like not until 21 was I romantic, romantic with my first guy. And I realized, oh, you're great too. <laughs> and that for me was almost like I had gone through my life in my brain. I was like, oh, but it's gonna be a woman. Like when I marry someone, end game is a woman for sure. So it was almost like learning my sexuality all over again when I realized, oh, I'm having feelings for this guy and now I'm being romantic with him and I really enjoy this and I hadn't been physical with a guy like that, like only women until 21. So that was its own stage of me realizing things about myself. Still to this day, I'm realizing things. I sound like that Kylie Jenner thing. This is the year of realizing things, but for me, it still is always a journey, not of me not knowing what my sexuality is, but I think it's hard. It's like feeling like you're enough for who you want to be in the community. Like a lot of people do sometimes look at bisexuals and we're not taking that seriously. And it should never feel like this. It should never, because if you are in the community, you don't have to prove anything. You being yourself and loving who you love is you in the community. I still have these like battles sometimes of feeling like I have to prove myself or I know a lot of the times growing up and I came out but I was still somewhat antisocial and mostly just around my sister's friends which were mostly straight. I wasn't in a lot of queer spaces. I felt like now I'm out but I don't even know if the people around me can really relate to me and it still felt like even though I was out I felt like so so lonely if that makes any sense. And that's honestly why I love being online because I found community and friends from different places that just made me feel seen. Going on Love Island, honestly, was almost like coming out again because it was in such a public form. But sharing that on that show in general, once again, it felt so scary. Honestly, even before going on the show, since I had never been in a relationship with a man, just with women, I had literally just had my first, you know what, with a guy a couple months before Love Island. So in my mind, I was like, yeah, okay, I can have those feelings for a man. I'm not going on the show, not being authentic to myself, but do I really think that I can handle going on the show that is super hetero, knowing how to navigate it since I'm super new to dating men? It was hard, but like I said, going on that show and being open about my sexuality, once again, I found so many people, this beautiful community of people that I now talk to all the time online. I always love when you guys come to me with questions about how to come out. I mean, let's let's talk about that right now. How do you come out? Number one, you don't have to. No one has to come out. You can just be you and date who you date and there, there doesn't have to be that I'm out moment. It's all based on what's best for you. Same as like labeling yourself, I say. If you don't wanna label yourself and you just wanna Date who you date, that's fine, but I don't also like when people poo poo like, why do you need to label yourself? I like to label myself because I like to identify myself so people know what I'm about and I mean, not now, honestly, because I'm so open online that I just think a lot of people know my sexuality. But before that, I would find different ways when I first came out, which once again, it's like dumb because you can just be yourself and you don't have to like 
wear anything or like act any type of way to show your sexuality. But yeah, you don't ever need to come out. But if you do want to come out, I always just say, and I've said this a billion times before, just make sure that you're coming out to someone or in an environment that it's a safe place. It sounds so sad to say, and I hate to even say it, if you're living like under your parents' roof or in an environment where if you come out, you are fearful of being kicked out and you don't have the finances to support yourself. And that can be somewhat scary and dangerous and a bunch of different things. I always say, maybe try to find someone whether it's online or a friend or whoever that is a safe space for you maybe you're thinking like there's literally no one around me that I would even think would be okay like my town my whole town would not be okay like all this different stuff that's where social media is a beautiful place and always be safe and careful with who you're talking to but just talking to like literally one person can make the difference for maybe if you are in a more unsafe environment and I hope that doesn't make anyone like angry or sad but that's just like my personal advice is to just find one person a safe space if you are in that kind of situation if you're in a situation where you believe that the people around you are going to be supportive i've heard so many stories where it's crazy because i was the same i had this shame i had this feeling of disgust with myself even being in such a supportive loving environment i felt all of those things i guess i would would have just loved to tell myself at that time and even sometimes tell myself now when i feel like i have to prove something or be something you don't have to be anything that you aren't to be in this community. You don't have to feel like there's something wrong with you or gross or any of those terrible things that we feel about ourselves sometimes. You are enough the way that you are. You don't have to come out. You're on your own journey. You don't have to be like other people in the community. You can be fully yourself. And if you sit in that truth and tell yourself that every single day, I always say fake it till you make it. Everyone's always like, oh my gosh, you're so confident. Yes and no. Inside, I'm usually terrified, but I'm like in the mode always of fake it till you make it. Fake the confidence, fake the feeling of I am that bitch, you know, like fake all of those positive emotions about yourself. And if you keep on like telling yourself that and changing those thoughts from I'm not enough, I don't think that people accept me in the community, like all those negatives, if you just start telling yourself the opposite, no, I deserve to be in this space. I deserve to speak my truth and be open about who I am. I deserve to love who I love. And you don't have to immediately feel that confidence and truly believe it inside. But if you tell yourself that stuff enough every day, I don't care if you have to write it on the mirror in your bathroom, over time, you'll start to believe it. It's just how our brains work. But if you do continue to go down a road of constantly telling yourself that you aren't enough or something about you is wrong, that is just true and genuine and loving about who you are, you're going to feel those negative emotions for the rest of your life. And I don't think anyone deserves to feel that way about themselves, not even when it comes to sexuality, but anything in general, when it comes to your dreams, like that, this can be applied to anything. Yeah, number one, coming out, please make sure you have a safe space, even if it's just one person, someone that can support you and listen to you and make you feel loved and supported through this journey. Number two, you don't have to come out. You don't have to. But if you do and you want to, then do it. Number three, once you come out, you don't have to change anything about yourself. Or maybe you do want to change things about yourself because you feel like you've been dressing a certain type of way or acting a certain type of way to fit into a certain box because you weren't okay to be yourself fully. It's trial and error. Just try different things. I still honestly go like months dressing one way. Like I was in like this boho kick where I was like everything was like bohemian goddess. And then sometimes I'm I'm more like in my masculine energy and I'm like in pantsuits and I'm vibing with that and that makes me feel my most like sexy and sometimes, you know, super girly and, and there's nothing wrong. Like once again, even with this, you don't have to find a certain aesthetic or who you are. You can constantly change because as humans, we constantly change. All that I'm trying to say is that coming out can be really hard no matter what your support system looks like. Even if you are in a household more like mine where it was okay, don't think like badly about yourself for feeling the way that you felt because you did have a supportive, you know, family. You're allowed to feel all the emotions that you feel. If you are someone out there that is not out yet and you wanna come out, just take your time. You just have to, like I said, keep on telling yourself those positive things in the morning. Don't think you ever have to be anything that you are not and move through life the way that you want to. It's too short of a time, honestly, as well, to just try to live for other people or be something that we're not because we think it's gonna be easier. It's still, I think, hard to this day navigating who I want, what I want, where I'm at in my life. That's like a whole other 
world to go into. Sometimes I'm like, I wish I could go back to first because I love the beginning excitement of anything in my life. I feel like sometimes I've, I've done so many things that I'm so grateful for. That's also why I'm excited for this YouTube page because even though I've shared so much about my life and I really enjoy doing it and sometimes it's scary to be like super vulnerable and open online, it, it always invigorates me to like be myself even more and live in my truth and be open. But this will be fun because I think coming on here, I'm just going to share a bunch of stuff that I've already shared, but just be in more depth and honestly talking about it where I'm at now. I think it's going to be not a different story of what happened with a lot of stuff in my life, but just a different perspective that I'm so grateful that I have now. This video was a little all over the place, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Just to know, and it's gonna sound so sappy, you're not alone. There's a lot of people that are going through the same exact thing as you right now, and you don't have to compare yourself to anyone else in this freaking world ever. I'm so bad at saying, it's like walk to the beat of your own drum, be a salmon, go against the stream. <laughs> Just know that your coming out journey is going to be different from everyone else's. But then you're going to see similarities and maybe even saw some in my story that make you feel like, oh, that's what I'm going through too. And that's the beautiful thing about being humans and supporting each other. If you've made it this far, thank you so, so much. Like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications if you guys want to see more of my videos. And leave me any questions down below of things that you want me to talk about in the future.